In this video, I will work out the expression for the IV characteristic of a MOSFET and conclude with an expression for the drain source current and saturation. And we can begin with the inversion charge that we derived earlier, which is a function of the oxide capacitance, the gate source voltage, the threshold voltage, and the body effect. That expression for inversion charge did make one big simplifying assumption, and that was that everywhere in the channel, we're at the same potential as the source. And that's not really true, and so we're going to have to make some changes to it. Let's begin just with a picture. Your measurement of the gate source voltage will depend on where you are in the channel. Let's draw a picture of the MOSFET. We've got the source, we have the drain, and we have the oxide layer, and we have the metallic gate. There's a gate voltage, V sub G. There's a source voltage, V sub S. There's a drain voltage, V sub D. And of course, there's a body voltage, V sub B. There's an inversion layer, full of inversion charge. The inversion layer has the thickness. We'll call it T sub I and V for the thickness of the inversion layer. Throughout the channel, the potential is varying. Previously, we assumed throughout the channel the potential is the same as the source. And that gave us this expression. So what we're going to do now is we're going to relax that assumption that the potential is the same everywhere. And we're going to modify this expression to account for that. So there's now a potential difference between wherever you are in the channel to the source, so as a function of where you are in the channel. Call V sub Cx, the channel source voltage, which is position dependent. What's the position? Well, x equals zero at the source, and x equals L at the drain. But let's consider what we need to change. This gate source voltage previously just assumed that that's the same potential everywhere in the gate. Well, it is no longer to be assumed but that really was, was the potential between the gate and where you are in the channel. So I'm going to replace that with something that relates the gate potential, right there, to where you're at in the channel. And the reason for doing that is because the inversion charge you might expect to be position dependent as you move along here. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but let's figure out what the inversion charge is at specific locations throughout the channel. So we should be using the gate to where you are voltage. And where you're at, the potential is not the source potential. So we'll just write that. And also this V sub SB, the source body potential. We're no longer assuming that we're at the source. We're somewhere in the channel. So I'd rather write V sub channel B, V sub CB. That's a function of X. Those are two new variables. Let's talk about how we're going to work them out. We're going to substitute V sub GS in that equation for V sub CG, gate channel voltage. V sub GS, we're going to replace it with voltage from the gate to the channel. And what is that voltage from the gate to the channel? Here's the gate, and here you are somewhere in the channel. So this is where you're at. The voltage between the gate and the channel, you have to agree, it's the voltage between the gate and the source. So voltage between the gate and the source minus the voltage between the channel and the source. Rewrite this as V sub gate source, which is just a constant that gate is set to, minus V sub channel source, function of x. And then let's look at the other one, V sub SB, the source body voltage. We're going to have to replace that one with something here you are again, somewhere in the channel. We're going to want to replace it with the voltage of where you are to the body. Would you agree that the voltage of where you are to the voltage of the body is the voltage from where you are to the source plus the voltage from the source to the body? So the voltage from where you are all the way to the body is the sum of where you are to the source plus the source to the body. We'll make that little substitution. V sub CB of X. And we'll write that as V sub SB plus V sub channel source. V sub source, cha source body plus V sub channel source, and that's a function of X. Substitute those two expressions in up here to get the inversion charge. The inversion charge is minus the oxide capacitance. So replacing V sub gate source with V sub gate channel, and V sub gate channel is V sub gate source minus V sub channel source of X. V sub T stays the same, V sub T zero, the threshold voltage when there's no body effect, minus alpha times V sub SB is replaced with V sub CB, and V sub CB 
is v sub s b plus v channel source. And that's a function of x. That's our new inversion charge layer. You know, last time we called this the threshold voltage v sub t, a function of v sub s b. I'm going to call it v sub t. v sub t is v sub t when there's no body effect plus alpha v source body. So we're going to make that little uh, replacement. And let's write one last algebraic step here. So I have minus C oxide times V gate source minus V threshold minus V channel source of X times alpha plus 1. Make sure you see that. That's combining some terms and just calling those, those two things added together, V sub T, the threshold voltage. We're going to use that expression now to find the current from the drain to the source. And we're going to use the expression that we have for current density, which is the carrier concentration times the charge times the velocity. And we're going to put things in there. Current density is carrier concentration N times Q charge times the velocity. J is current per unit area. Now we're talking about the drain source current. So I should probably also have a DS on J. What's the area? So J is current over area. Area is the cross-sectional area that the current flows through. The current is going through a cross-sectional area that has area. Inversion charge is the height times a width. Now, L is not what we use. We're going to use W. We've invoked W before. W is the dimension going into the page here. I didn't do a three-dimensional picture there, but the distance that this channel goes into the screen is W. L is its length. But we're talking about the area that current penetrates, and current is flowing between the source and the drain is passing through an area of T inversion times W, not T inversion times L. I from the drain to the source is N Q. Before I write V, let me write T inversion times W. Now I will write the V. So I just brought the denominator over. And then I'm going to multiply it by 1. You can always multiply it by 1, right? And what's 1 going to, going to be? It's going to be L divided by L. Why that is, is because I want to actually write out volume of the inversion layer. Let's change this a little bit here. N Q T inversion W L times V over L. V is the velocity of the charge carriers. Hopefully recognize that T inversion times W times L is the volume of the inversion layer. I'm going to rewrite this as little Q sub I N V which stands for the actual charge in the inversion layer, the number of coulombs that are packed in there, times the speed over the L. And there's an expression for the drain source current. Not quite ready to be worked with. We need to get Q inversion in there. So I'm going to keep going. I drain source is... I'm going to replace something now. Q inversion is the actual uh, coulombs in the inversion layer. We have previously an expression for big Q. Big Q is the charge per unit area, coulombs per square centimeter. Big Q is the total charge in the inversion layer divided by WL. So I'm going to replace that little Q with big Q inversion, which we have an equation for now, times WL. That's little Q. And then V over L mostly make use of the expression on the previous page for a little q. Cancel the l's. And the velocity of a charge carrier is related to the electric field. Now I'll use mu sub ns, the surface mobility, because remember we're at the surface. So I'll use that times the electric field. Electric field is minus the gradient of potential. I'll say it again. Electric field is minus the gradient of potential. I'm not going to write anything after this equal sign. Okay, let's do one more step here. I'm going to put in all of the things that make up Q inversion. You might flip back and look at everything we came up with. This is the uh, expression that we finally arrived at after accounting for position dependence along the channel. The gate source minus V sub threshold minus V sub channel source, which is X dependent times 1 plus alpha. Okay, that's Q inversion. Times W and then times Velocity. Velocity is mobility. Electric field is minus a gradient of potential, so I'm going to write minus, but gradient means d by dx. And what potential am I talking about? Well, I'm at some position in the channel. 
So whatever the gradient of potential is wherever I am, that's the electric field. So let me write dV channel source. All potentials are referenced to the source right now. dx. That's my drain source current. I can make use of that expression. Did you see how that's sort of a differential equation? Let's talk about these things. I sub ds. That's the current going from the drain to the source. I want to point out right now that as you move along the channel, that can't change. You have to have the same number of coulombs per second going by everywhere in the channel. Everywhere along here, you got to have the same number of coulombs per second going by. Otherwise, you are accumulating or destroying charge. Continuity requires that I sub ds is just a number. And so we'll keep it that way. dv by dx, this is dv channel source by dx. I'm going to bring the dx differential over to the other side. And you'll notice it got a lot of constants in it. So I sub ds is constant. W, C, X, I, mu sub n, s, constant. V gate source is a constant. The threshold voltage is even a constant. Alpha is a constant. The only variable is channel source voltage. And guess what? It's also the differential. This turns out to be almost a, a trivial thing to solve. Put an integral sign in front of everything. So I ds is a constant, so I just put the integral sign in front of dx, and we're integrating from 0 to L. V channel source is the only variable. It's multiplied by all this stuff, so I can, I can manage to get wc mu outside, but I have to put the integral sign right here. How do we know what to integrate from and to? Whenever you put limits on an integral and you have an integral sign on each side, you have to make sure that the upper and lower integral limits agree with each other. So when x equals 0, channel source voltage is 0, right? Because when x equals 0, you are at the source. So the voltage between the source and the channel at x equals 0 is 0. As opposed to x equals L. When x equals L, you're way down at the drain. So the voltage from the source to the channel is the same as the voltage from the drain to the source. That's what justifies these limits here. So you can simply write out the integrals. I drain source. That integral just comes out to L. Is W oxide capacitance mobility. So now can you do that integral in your head? I think you can. You have V gate source, but the variable is V channel source. You have one power of that. V threshold, and the, again, one power of V channel source, minus 1 minus alpha, but you're already integrating a power of V channel source, so that becomes 1 half V channel source squared. And we'll evaluate that from V channel source equals 0 to V channel source equals the drain source voltage. So go ahead and evaluate that, and that's what you get. Bring the L over to the other side, do a little simplification. Ohm's law, I is V over R. Everything multiplying V drain source is 1 over the resistance of the channel. V drain source is the voltage across the channel. I drain source is the current through the channel. What's multiplying V drain source is 1 over the channel resistance. That's the IV characteristic for a MOSFET. That's our model. It includes the body effect. That's what the alpha is all about. There's our model for the MOSFET, the IV model, IV characteristic. You notice uh, I drain source as a function of voltage drain source is a quadratic. Well, it's, a, it's a quadratic plus linear. It's of the form y equals ax minus bx squared. Do you see that? I drain source versus V drain source looks like that. So let's sketch out what that will look like. So that's V drain source. That's I drain source. When V drain source is zero, there is no current. That's the expression for a concave down parabola. Now I'm going to switch over to dashed line. Up here, the slope goes to zero. And when the drain source current versus the drain source voltage has zero slope, that's saturation. Beyond this point, where we're going to give it a name, it's V sub D sat. Instead of V D S sat, which might make sense, we're going to follow the book's lead and call it V D sat. Instead of actually continuing on this curve, if you keep raising the drain source voltage, you're not going to start having less current. It stays leveled off. Actually, I would make that solid because that's what really happens. Let's take a look at this saturation effect. If we take the expression we have here for a drain source current and 
take its derivative relative to the drain source voltage, we can find the value of drain source voltage at this peak where it levels off and the corresponding current. So let's just do that. It's not going to take too long. So there's our expression. That's our IV model. So let's go ahead and write out that derivative, DIDS by DVDS. It's set equal to zero. You can do this as well. V gate source minus V threshold minus one plus alpha over two V drain source. Okay, that's product rule now. Do the other one. Minus one plus alpha. Oh, that's a plus. One plus alpha over two V drain source. That's got to equal zero. So you set that equal to zero and you can solve for the V drain source. I mean, when you get that, you know, you got, I don't know, I'll do it. One plus alpha times V drain source equals what's left, V gate source. Let's combine those two terms. V drain source at saturation has the special name of VD comma sat. V gate source minus V threshold over alpha plus one. That's an important expression. And furthermore, now we can find out what the drain source current is. Take that expression for VD sat and plug it back in up here for IDS, and we'll write down I drain at saturation. Just look at the top of the screen there, WC oxide electrical mu N S over L, and I'm going to multiply it by V gate source minus V threshold minus 1 plus alpha over 2 times, now instead of VDS, I'm going to write VGS minus V threshold over alpha plus one times another power of VDS, VGS minus V threshold over alpha plus one. And we have a nice model now. ID sat drain source current when we arrive at saturation and then when we're anywhere beyond that point is, let's just simplify it. There's a W over two L. Maybe try to see if you come up with this on your own. C oxide electrical mu sub NS, the surface mobility, over alpha plus one times, and then what's left for voltages, V gate source minus V threshold. Do you see that that's squared? That's what you're left with. I will leave that bit of algebra for from the, those last two lines for you to try to work out on your own. That's the drain source current at saturation. We have a model that's complete enough for us to move forward with. It has drain source current and also effectively models the saturation. That's what we will use going forward.